When you're recording vocals here in GarageBand on the iPhone or the iPad, there's a few really important things to keep in mind, none more so than the input gain you set on your microphone or your interface. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I set input gain on my microphone for vocal recording. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And if that sounds like something that you're interested in, subscribe to the channel and you'll be kept up to date. But today is vocal recording day. So what I wanted to do is show you how I set up my interface for vocal recording. There's really important things to do when you're recording vocals, using a pop filter, making sure you're a decent distance from the microphone, using a decent microphone and good vocal and singing technique. But the one thing that I see more people get wrong than anything else is setting their input gain. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Let's dive down and take a look at the setup that I'll be using here. Here is the setup that I'm using here today. Yes, I've got my Steinberg UR12 interface here on a chair in front of the microphone stand that I'm using, and it's connected to my iPhone 6S Plus. I've already recorded a couple of sort of test tracks here just to check my levels and get things sounding right. But why I wanted to show you this is that I've got my MXL550 large diaphragm condenser plugged in here. And what I'll be doing is this is my input gain. So at the moment, it's at about 50%. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you the difference between recording with the gain all the way up compared to having it at the right level or too low. Because what most people do is that they record with gain too high, they get clipping and other issues and they get room noise and they get all sorts of things going on there. So I want to show you what can happen if you do it wrong and why it's important to get your gain set correctly. Okay, so enough of that Blair Witch style shaky camera footage. You can see here that I'm back in GarageBand and here is the track that I've recorded as a test track. Now this is with my input gain set to 50%, which is about what I use, sometimes a little bit less if I'm singing a loud rock song. But this is looking about right. The waveform looks right. And when you play it back, the audio is peaking at about the right level that we want it to be, which is around about that 60 to 70% of our maximum volume. But what I'm gonna show you now is how we can set the gain and what impact how we set the gain actually has. So let's jump into our microphone. Now, the microphone settings I have here are exactly what I'm using, except I have some delay, delay and ambience that I record with just because I find it easier when you're recording a track to have those set. I won't have those on right now because otherwise you'll be hearing those and it will be very annoying. So this is at 50% gain. I'm talking normally, if I do it, if I sing a line of this song, time after time we are standing in line and we're making the most, and I hit my mic stand, then you'll see there that we're, we're peaking. We're not getting into the orange or the red over here on the left on the input gain. And we're sitting at around, you know, 50% up to about 70%. And that to me is the sweet spot in the digital environment of where you want your input gain to be. We'll show you what can happen if you go too low or too high in a moment. Now your output gain over here on the right, you can turn that up and down as much as you want because that does not impact the input signal. That won't change how loud or how soft the volume is recorded, that is only the playback volume. And that's something that trips up a lot of people when they start using this. They get their gain worked out or they try to do their, what they call gain staging and they put the output gain up and think that that's going to increase the microphone signal or they turn it down. Worse still, they turn this down and then expect that that's going to fix their clipping issues. But over here on the left, they're still in the red. So they're things that you don't want to do. But what I'm going to do now is let's experiment here a little bit. First, we're going to go down. Let's go down to 25%. You may not be able to hear me too well when I'm talking, but you'll hear what it sounds like. And you'll be able to see on our meters what it looks like. So we'll dial down now. We are now at 25%. I'll turn the output up a little bit so you can still hear me. You can see the problem here. If you're recording at this level, you're not going to get enough level in to your digital audio workstation into GarageBand here. So let's turn ourselves back up to 50. And there we go. Now what I'll do is I'm here at 50 and I'm going to be quiet for five seconds. And I want you to just listen to the noise in the background without me talking. So we'll start now. So what you could probably hear then was maybe a little bit of my breathing or my, my heart beating, but you can hear the room noise. So that's what we call the noise floor. So when you are setting your preamp, what you really want to do is try and get the least amount of noise floor, but the most amount of signal. So it is a balancing act. And when I'm talking now and when I'm singing, you'll, you can barely notice that background noise. But when I stop, 
it's suddenly you can hear my computer fan. You can probably hear the dog snoring in the corner. So it's not going to be great. But what I'll do now is let's turn the input gain up to 75% and you will hear what the difference is. So we're dialing up now. There's that background noise and I'm going to turn my output gain down. Otherwise, I'm going to blow your head off. But you can see I'm already pushing just by talking. I'm pushing into the yellow and the red on the input gain. And if I sing time after, yeah, I'm going to be clipping and distorting my signal. Now, let's do that five second test again so you can hear the background noise. Yeah, you can hear that. I've, I've dropped back down to 50% now. So going up to 75%, you can hear the difference. You can hear that noise floor. You can hear that background noise coming up, which is not what we want. And you're going to clip your signal. Now, just for the uh, the sake of experimenting, because I know you want me to sit, put this up to 11. We don't have 11, but we do have 100%. So what I'll do is I won't speak, but let's just dial this up to 100%. And you'll be able to probably hear the, the neighbor children arguing and everything else going on in the neighborhood. So I'll do my five second test in just a moment at 100% starting now. There you go. I, I heard some voices there and I, I don't have anything playing. It's always a little bit creepy. You can hear too much. If you, if you ever wanted to eavesdrop on someone, plug in a large diaphragm condenser and turn the gain all the way up. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. This is just something that I've been playing around with and getting that input gain right is so important. And I hear so many people that either have it too low because they're too scared of that noise floor, which as you can hear right now, 50%, you can barely hear that when I'm talking or when I'm singing, or they crank it up too high and they get clipping, distortion, and too much background noise. Finding that happy medium will improve your vocal and instrument and any other recordings here in GarageBand. So there you go, getting your gain set for your microphone and for your vocal recordings is not the hardest thing to do, but if you get it wrong, you can see what some of the consequences can be. I hope you found this useful. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave those down below, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do that by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon up there in the top right corner, or you can check out two other videos linked right down below. Don't forget, you can also head to studiolivetoday.com, that place, for even more audio goodness.